Hi, I am Dr. Sue Ellen Carpenter, and we are now ready to turn our attention to the specifics of an IVF cycle. There are several protocols to choose from when starting in vitro fertilization. The best protocol for a given couple will be determined by discussion among all the physicians and the embryology lab director. Usually, patients are started on birth control pills at the beginning of a period. This helps synchronize later growth of the follicles. Lupron injections are used to prevent you from ovulating prior to the egg retrieval. In the luteal phase protocol, which is the most frequent protocol used, Lupron shots will be started while you are still on birth control pills. Then you will stop your birth control pills, which will result in another period. This is the signal to start the hormone injections of FSH and LH. FSH and LH are pituitary hormones that stimulate egg development. These are typically taken for 8 to 12 days. During this time, frequent monitoring with ultrasound and blood work will be done to make sure you are responding to the medications appropriately. When the follicles are large enough, ovulation will be triggered with a final injection of HCG. 35 hours later, the egg retrieval will be done under anesthesia in our procedure room. Three to five days after this, the embryo transfer will be performed, and two weeks later, a pregnancy test occurs. There are other protocols we sometimes opt to use. Instead of taking Lupron injections initially, microdoses of Lupron can be used in conjunction with the injections of FSH and LH. This is called a microdose flare protocol and is one of our strongest stimulation protocols. Alternatively, you might be on an antagonist protocol which uses no Lupron at all. Instead, a medicine called Antigon is given after the FSH and LH shots are started which prevents you from ovulating prematurely. The goal of all our protocols is to achieve follicular growth that is sufficient to allow you to undergo egg retrieval. These are examples of syringes and needles used for hormone injections. Luckily, most medications are now able to be given subcutaneously or just below the skin, such that the small needle on the top of the screen can be used. In the past, intramuscular injections were given. These required using the needle shown at the bottom of the screen. Rarely does this type of needle need to be used these days. This is an illustration of the way we set up for an egg retrieval. The anesthesia for egg retrieval is referred to as conscious sedation. You will breathe for yourself, not requiring a ventilator, for example, but you will not be aware of the egg retrieval procedure. Many patients have had similar treatment for wisdom tooth extraction. The egg retrieval is usually completed in 15 to 20 minutes. The setup for an egg retrieval includes a vaginal ultrasound probe, which is attached to a needle guide that controls the pathway of the needle through the vaginal wall and into the ovary. The needle is attached to a test tube containing media appropriate to the eggs, and the test tube is attached to a foot suction. The physician focuses on the ultrasound view of the follicles in the ovary. We place the tip of the needle in the center of a follicle and hit the foot suction, all the fluid from the follicle is removed and the egg comes with it. This is a close-up view of the ultrasound as we are doing an egg retrieval. The tip of the needle enters the center of the follicle and all of the fluid is removed and the egg comes along with it. The egg retrieval procedure is usually complete in 15 to 20 minutes. During the stimulation protocol, we will expect to see numerous follicles develop. Each patient is unique, but a typical situation might be that we would follow the development of 16 follicles on ultrasound. We will try to aspirate all the fluid from each follicle at the retrieval. Not every follicle will contain an egg. Not every egg that we retrieve will be mature, but all the mature eggs will be inseminated with sperm, and it is reasonable to expect approximately 75% of those eggs to fertilize normally. Some of the resulting embryos will not be normal and they will stop growing in the subsequent two to three days. Normal embryos will continue to grow and divide and two or three embryos will be transferred into the patient's uterus on day three or day five after the egg retrieval. On day five or six, if there are extra healthy embryos, they can be frozen for future use. About a third of couples should expect to have embryos available for freezing. The embryo transfer is carried out under abdominal ultrasound guidance. It takes place in the same room as the egg retrieval because the room is environmentally controlled for the embryos, but the transfer is painless and does not require anesthesia. This is the abdominal ultrasound view of a transfer. 
At the top of the slide is the patient's abdominal wall. The black irregular shape in the center of the screen is her bladder full. Just below the bladder is the uterus. And under abdominal ultrasound guidance, we can watch the tip of the embryo transfer catheter as it moves from left to right, traversing the cervix and entering the endometrial cavity. When the embryos are placed in the cavity, there's a small flash of white light that represents the micro drop containing the embryos. The patient will rest in the transfer room for 10 minutes following the procedure and then be discharged to home.